I'd like to say hello, Restoration. Hi, this is Elder Kenneth Jones coming to you on Wednesday, October 12th, 2022. Thank you for joining our broadcast on tonight. Uh, we're studying in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 3 through 10 on tonight. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 10 on tonight. Um, I bring you greetings on behalf of our senior pastor, Emma Jean Ingram, the Restoration Christian Fellowship Church family. Uh, we welcome you to our uh, broadcast on tonight, and we pray that something will be said to encourage your hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, tonight, I'm going to start off with reading a scripture uh, with all the uh, violence and all the different things that are happening around the world in our communities, our neighborhoods. Um, I was led to uh, just read, um, start off with tonight with James chapter 5 on tonight. James chapter five, and I want to read verse 16. We always hear the end of this scripture um, and it's referencing uh, prayer, amen, and how prayer is so important uh, to um, the body of believers. And we have a privilege and honor to be able to pray. And so I just want to start off as we get ready to enter into the class on tonight with prayer, and then we're going to read our scriptures. But I'm reading James chapter five, verse 16, and it says this, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Amen. But this is where we always and always hear this end part of the scripture. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Amen. And I just like to read the notes that I came across on that, um, which is such a blessing. It reads, as Christians, our most powerful resource is communion with God through prayer. The results are often greater than we would have thought possible. Some people see prayer as a last resort <laughs> uh, to, be to be tried when all else fails. Amen. How many know that we got to try prayer first and not when all else fails? Amen. Uh, we should make prayer that number one priority in our lives and for our nation and our families. This approach is backwards. Uh, prayer should always come first because God has infinitely greater power than we have to rely on prayer from the start only makes sense, especially because God encourages us to do so. Amen. So I just felt led to start that way on tonight because prayers of the righteous avail of much. And how many know that we need prayer for our families, prayer for our nations, prayer for our world, amen, our government. Uh, we need prayer. And I believe the prayers of the right, righteous avail of much and because we are praying in the name of Jesus Christ, we can expect results um, because um, we're praying in his name and not our own name or some false God name, but we're praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you can, we're going to open up in a brief prayer um, before we get started with the lesson on tonight. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this class on tonight. We thank you for those who have joined the class on tonight. Uh, we pray that something will be said to encourage all of us on tonight and those who will view this broadcast in the future. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiving us and placing us in right standing with our Father God. We thank you, O oh God, that because of your Son Jesus Christ, we have eternal life, and because of your save, because of your Son Jesus Christ, we also have victory down here on this earth. Amen. Because of your Son Jesus, so God, we thank you for victory on tonight. We thank you for victory over sin and death. We thank you for victory over finances, over uh, home problems, home issues, or whatever um, the problem is on tonight. We thank you, O oh God, for victory on tonight, O oh God, over everything that concerns us in the name of Jesus, whether it's health, amen. We pray for victory in it on tonight. Uh, uh, sickness, uh, health, as uh, far as diabetes, cancer, eye problems, throat problems, thyroid problems, whatever it is, God, we pray that you be, uh, you will heal those that need healing on tonight. We pray that you will give us victory in every area of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray now for husband and wives to reunite uh, in communication, with raising their kids, with loving each other, with taking care of their families in the name of Jesus Christ. We know, oh God, the enemy is after families, amen. And so we pray for families on tonight that you cover, amen, those families that are fighting the good fight of faith, those families that are staying close uh, to, un to God's unchanging hand, those families that are there, amen, working together, 
to win over the enemy. So we thank you on tonight, oh God, for watching over families on tonight. We also thank you, oh God, for watching over our church, Restoration Christian Fellowship Church. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, for our pastor, uh, Senior Pastor Imogene Ingram. We thank you for her wisdom, her guidance, her encouragement, her knowledge of scripture, her knowledge of leading the congregation, oh God. We thank you for over 36 years, oh God, she's been pastoring and leading, oh God. So we thank you for her and we pray for her strength, her encouragement, amen. We pray, amen, that everything she puts out to us, that you, you will return it to her in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, we just thank you once again for your uh, presence being at restoration. We pray for the members. We ask you to uh, watch over, cover all the members, families, their children, uh, their wives, their husbands, their parents, uh, their children, grandchildren, everything that concerns our members, oh God, we pray, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you perfect everything that concerns them in the name of Jesus Christ. We also pray for our nation. We pray for President Biden. We pray for his staff. We pray for all the um, those that support him, amen, his family as well, that you would give him godly wisdom on how to lead our nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the House, the Senate. We pray for our local, state, and federal governments as well. And God, we also, as we are praying for um, law, uh, 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 government, we pray for law enforcement on tonight. We lift up those officers who were uh, shot today serving a warrant. Uh, we pray for their families and we pray for their speedily recovery. And God, we pray against this lawlessness that is existing in our nation today where it's okay to shoot a police officer. It's okay to rob, steal, do anything you want. And uh, because of the enemy um, believes that uh, he has control. He does have control of this domain, this, this um, dominion, but we know that God has the ultimate control and God can bring change. And that's why I started this scripture with James 5 and uh, 16 on tonight, because the prayers of the righteous avail of much. So as we pray, we can bring about change in our land. We can bring about change in our communities, changes in our government, changes in our schools, changes in our, um, uh, our local, state, federal government once again. But we must pray and we must work together we pray for churches to come together to unite and not be afraid to support each other. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that um, love will prevail and unity will prevail amongst the churches. There will be, won't be no big I, small I, but we will all work together as a, a cohesive body serving the kingdom in whatever area God has called us to do. Oh God, so we thank you once again for our, our Cycloville area. We pray, amen, for all the uh, uh, residents of Cyclaville, surrounding areas as well. We pray for their homes. We pray for their children. We pray for their families. We pray for the school district. We pray for the police. We pray for the fire department. And also, God, before we close, we definitely lift up the healthcare workers, um, home aid workers, all those that are still working in the community, amen, to, um, to bring uh, protection, to bring health, to bring uh, uh, um, uh, healing, amen, uh, as our healthcare workers do, especially during this uh, end of the pandemic as we come into the end. So we pray for all those healthcare workers, first responders that are still working um, on behalf of the people and serving those who are um, come to see them in hospitals, uh, uh, urgent cares, patient one, all those different places where people are serving our community. God, we ask you to pray. We lift them up and we pray for the excuse me, in the name of Jesus Christ. So God, we thank you once again for this class. Once again, we ask you to word my mouth. I decrease that you may increase and that something will be said to bless in each, each and every one of us on tonight. Amen. Uh, we thank you, uh, Sister Ricky and Sister Lovey for joining right now. Uh, we thank you um, for being part of the class on tonight. Um, as stated, we are in Ephesians chapter one. Um, we're going to be starting at verses three. I'm going to read verses three through 10 in your hearing. Um, in your packet, uh, we are up to what is called um, the blessings, uh, the blessing of God. That's where we're going to start on tonight. Um, also, I want to welcome Pastor Imogene Ingram uh, to the broadcast as well on tonight. I think she just popped up there. Um, and... Uh, let me just bring this up. Okay, this is where we're going to be. Uh, what we're going to be covering on tonight. 
Uh, we're starting off, like I stated, verses 3 through 14, but of course we're not going to be able to get through all those verses on tonight. Um, as stated, we probably get to verse 7 or maybe more, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but we're going to be covering tonight um, the blessings of God. Um, overall, these are the next few weeks. We're going to be covering these eight topics uh, dealing with the blessings of God. Uh, God's blessings are heavenly blessings, not material. Uh, verse three, verse four, we're going to be covering God has chosen us to be holy and blameless. Uh, God has uh, adopted us as children. Uh, verse five and six, verse seven, God has redeemed us, forgiving, forgiven our sins. Verse seven, and God has given us wisdom and understanding, uh, verse 8 and verse uh, 9 and 10. God has revealed the mystery of his will to us, uh, verses 9 through 10. And um, 7 is God has given us an inheritance, glory to God, that is made, uh, that, uh, that is made us the heritage of God, verses 11 and 13. And lastly, uh, God sealed all this with this Holy Spirit in verse 14. Uh, those are the topics um, that we're going to be covering these next few weeks. And um, right now, I'm just going to read the scripture, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading verses 3 through 10 on tonight, uh, starting at verse 3. Uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasures of his will, to praise to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us acceptable in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he have abounded uh, toward us uh, in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mysteries of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in all, um, gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Amen. We'll stop right there, verses uh, 3 through 10 on tonight. Uh, we'd like to say hello to uh, Sister Stewart, just joined us on tonight as well. Uh, we'd like to say hello to her. Um, and we on, uh, like I said, in your packet, um, we're reading from um, uh, point A, the blessings of God. That's where we're going to start at tonight. Um, we all know that this is a uh, one, all the scripture is important and is a blessing to us. Um, this particular scripture has great importance, amen, because it talks about God's plan for the world. It's going to talk about his eternal plan. It deals with, amen, uh, deals with the great blessings of God, amen. And how many know that God's blessings are great and they're uh, awesome, amen? And we're going to learn about that on tonight, God's blessings. Um, to us. And he pours us, he, we don't get these blessings just because, amen. We get these blessings, amen, because we have like, trusted and put our faith in his son, Jesus Christ, amen. And as we're going to learn on tonight, these blessings, it's not just uh, a rational ration to us, amen. It's poured out on us because of our Savior, Jesus Christ, which is uh, God's son. And we're going to learn about that as well on tonight. So as we continue on, when we look at point one, uh, dealing with blessings, amen. Uh, God's blessings, amen, are spiritual and heavenly, amen. Um, God's blessings are spiritually, spiritual and heavenly, not material blessings. Throughout history, God has used two methods of blessing to deal with man before Christ. God dealt with, uh, with blessings to deal with man. Before Christ, God dealt with a man by blessing him with material blessings, he promised Abraham and Israel land and wealth and fame. Amen. So we see here that uh, when we talk about uh, blessings, um, these are spiritual blessings. Amen. These blessings that we're going to be talking about on tonight, they come from, amen, uh, from heaven. Um, they come from God, from heaven. Uh, this first group that we're going to look at here 
um, as you look at those scriptures, each one of those scriptures is referencing, amen, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, and it was talking about how God gave them land, how he gave them family. It talked about how um, God uh, told um, Abraham, amen, because of his righteousness, um, because he put his faith, amen, in God, amen, that he would give him land. And each one of those scriptures, that land carried on, not just for Abraham, these are talking about material blessings, amen, and we're going to learn about that as well on tonight, that we want spiritual blessings, amen, because the spiritual blessings will lead to the material blessings, amen, so, but it starts off here referencing in these uh, almost eight, eight scriptures um, that we don't have time really to get into, but all of those scriptures referencing Abraham, um, uh, Isaac, and Jacob, and how God used to give them, gave them land and gave them wealth. Amen. And because of that, amen, it carried on from generation to generation. And that's something that as I was studying that, it really blessed me to understand how God works and how God wants to uh, use uh, use um, his power and his authority and how he blesses us because he wanted to be not just for us, but he wants us to be a generational Thing, amen. It's not just for us to be blessed, but I like how when we read those scriptures and in your spare time, please read them, how the wealth went from Abraham um, and then it went to, to Isaac and then it also went to Jacob and then it carried on, amen, because it was a generational wealth because that wealth was not material, it was spiritual, amen. Um, but how many know that we can misuse God's blessings, amen, and as we read, as, as you will read those scriptures, you will find out um, that Israel misused, and um, I'm sorry, Israel uh, misused and hoarded the material blessings, instead of sharing it, um, sharing its blessing with other nations, amen, Israel isolated its, itself and claimed superiority, amen, and God-given rights over um, other nations of the earth, however, since Christ God deals with man spiritually, blessing him with spiritual blessings. Amen. And I stated, um, and we're going to talk about this. I want to get ahead of myself. But when we talk about material blessings, um, we all know that we can see the homes, the cars, uh, money, maybe in the bank or whatever. But we're going to learn tonight that that is much more of a blessing to have a spiritual blessing. Amen. And my question to start us off on tonight, um, how many of us would want more of a spiritual blessing over a material blessing? That's my first question on tonight. Hello, Pastor. I'm not sure if you was raising your hand, Pastor. Uh, I think you're on mute, Mom. Yes, I was muted. Oh. I'm sorry. I really wasn't. I was just raising my hand to the question. I thought you were asking how many would rather, and mm -hmm. I was just raising my hand. Yes, I would rather have the spiritual over the, you know. Yes, the material. Yes. Material. Yes. Anybody else want to um, chime in? Um, because, you know, many people believe that uh, God isn't blessing them now unless they have these material blessings to go along with it. But what I've learned that when you have the spiritual blessing, all the material stuff will come along with it. Um, and that's why Matthew 6, 33 comes into play, that he will give us um, that when we seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, all the things that we have need of shall be added, amen, or given to us. So it's very, very important that we do seek the kingdom. And as we seek the kingdom, um, we will be blessed. The material blessings will come because we're seeking the kingdom first. Amen. Amen. Um, so if there is no other thoughts on that, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at these five things, amen, um, that should be noted about this. Number one, uh, spiritual blessings are of the spirit. Amen. Spiritual blessings are of the spirit. It mm -hmm. is the spirit that control man and the circumstances that surround him. A man may feel bad. He may uh, be down, depressed and oppressed. But if his spirit is strong, he arises and conquers his feelings. He controls and overcomes the oppressing circumstances, and he lives a victorious life. Excuse me, but if his spirit is weak, 
whether at work or at play, often wallows around in self-pity, grumbling and griping and living a defeated day. And too often the days stretch into weeks and months until a person's life is down more than it is up, all because mm. the spirit is too weak to conquer. Thus, mm. the major blessings of God are bound to be blessings that are spiritual, that enable a person to control his life. Amen. So once again, the, the spiritual blessing, the spiritual blessing is going to help us stay up. Amen. Uh, we know the material blessing. If something go wrong with the car, some go wrong with the house, some go wrong with the jewelry, um, the fine suit, fine clothes or whatever it may be, it, it can mess us up. Amen. And because we have put our faith in that material thing, amen, it, it, it can cause us to live defeated lives. It doesn't help us be victorious, but when we are victorious and being blessed in the spirit, no matter what comes our way, we still are victorious, amen, because mm -hmm. of we're being blessed spiritual and we're not concerned with the material because God is in control of all of that anyway, amen? Amen. So we must focus on the spiritual, amen, because if we're being blessed spiritually, amen, we'll be able to control our lives and we'll be able once again to conquer the enemy, when he comes to bring defeat, discouragement, uh, or someone is having a bad day, uh, whatever it may be, we'll be able to conquer it, amen, because the spirit is blessing us. The spirit is rejuvenating us. The spirit, amen, is illuminating our hearts, illuminating our, our worship, our praise. It's just bringing us all that we have need of so we won't focus on the material blessings, amen? Amen. So the first one here is amen spiritual uh, blessings are of the spirit we're getting blessed through the spirit realm and we're going to get into that as well uh point two uh spiritual blessings are the very opposite of temporal blessings uh, they are the blessings of the inner man the blessings of the uh immortal but of all blessings they are the most glorious and satisfying they are the blessings that erase the loneliness, the alienation, and purposelessness of man. They are the blessings that give man an overabundance of life. Glory to God. That's awesome. Spiritual blessings are the very opposite of temporal. Amen. They are the blessings of the inner man. Amen. Uh, the blessings of the immortal. Amen. Uh, these blessings that I'm referring to will help us conquer loneliness, alienation, alienation, and purposelessness of man. Amen. Because they are giving us a blessing from heaven, a spiritual blessing, um, to give us an overabundant uh, abundance of life, glory. Um, are there any questions or thoughts on that first part there? As we continue on, I know I'd be uh, get going and I can just keep going. Um, but we're talking about spiritual blessings to start off with on tonight. Um, and as, as always, if you do have a thought, you can always raise your hand. Sometimes I'm not looking at the screen, but you can just uh, raise your hand and I get back to you. Uh, point three, uh, spiritual blessings are vastly superior to material blessings. Uh, they are permanent and perfect and eternal, lasting forever. They are the very same nature as God himself. Spiritual blessings exist and can be experienced both upon the earth, uh, the physical dimension of being, and in heaven, the spiritual dimensions of heaven. Amen. Spiritual blessings are vastly superior to material blessings. They are permanent, amen, and perfect and eternal, lasting forever. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Point four. Spiritual blessings are found only in Christ. Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead and exalted to the right hand of God the Father. He is in heaven, surrounded by all the heavenly atmosphere and blessings. Therefore, if a person is to experience the spiritual blessings, he must, amen, he or she must be in Christ. If a person is in Christ, then he sits in heaven with Christ. How is this possible? When a person believes in Christ, truly believes, God takes his faith and counts it as righteousness. God counts the person to be, be, to be the same as Christ, righteous and acceptable in God's mind, 
um, in God's mind, faith, I'm sorry, righteous and acceptable. In God's mind, faith in Christ makes a person just like Christ, holy and righteous and acceptable for heaven. Therefore, when a person believes in Christ, God, God's mind sees the person in Christ. God sees the person's, person's person identified with Christ seated in heaven and being seated in heaven, the person can experience all the blessings of heaven. Simply stated, to be in Christ means to believe in God's son so much that God becomes elated, not only elated, but elated so much that he counts the person to be just like Christ, acceptable, amen, and worthy to be blessed with all blessings of heaven. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Yeah. That because of Jesus Christ, amen, that 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 God is, is elated, amen, excited to bless us, amen, because he doesn't look at us anymore. He's looking at us and he sees his son that has covered us. His, his presence, his spirit is within us, has covered us and has uh, made a way for us to be in right standing with our father God. So now when he looks at us, he wants to bless us with heavenly blessings. Amen. Um, he wants to bless us spiritually, and he wants to do great things for us because we have been, amen, exchanged. Our lives have been exchanged for Jesus Christ's life. And when God looks at us, he sees his son. Amen. Now, we're going to go into uh, deeper study one. Um, it's down in your packet. Um, I know it's a little further down. And in the future, we'll figure out how to fix that. But once you go down, it's the deeper study that starts with justification. Uh, the deeper study one, and it should have justification there with it. And while you're looking that up, I'm going to uh, read uh, Galatians chapter two and verse 15 and 16 for your hearing. And we should know Galatians pretty well because we were on that for a pretty good amount of time. Amen. Uh, Galatians chapter two. Uh, verse 15 and 16. Uh, you can let me know if you, when you find, you can buy a shape waving your hands if you found justification, deep study, justification one. It's down in your packet. It's a few pages down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sister Stewart. <laughs> Finally figured it out. <laughs> My little toys. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read Galatians 2, and then I'm going to go ahead and read that portion to us. Um, we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ. Even when, when we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by works of the law, for by the works of the law, shall no flesh be justified. And once again, we studied that and we learned about that. And we were talking about in this particular chapter, Galatians, amen, how um, people were dependent on the law. They were dependent on um, uh, circumcision, uh, ceremonies, rituals on top of accepting Jesus Christ. But we learned that our faith is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law and he did that by dying on the cross he did that, amen, by going to the um, to, to the grave on our behalf and being raised back to um, life on that third day. He did all these things. So our faith is in Jesus Christ, amen, and not also in works. I was just uh, talking to somebody just the other day, and they were telling me how they were trying to make it into heaven by doing good, by um, uh, treating people right, um, by uh, uh, giving of their money, their time, and their effort. And I was so prompted, if we wouldn't have worked, I probably would ask them, have they accepted Jesus Christ? Uh, so I had to temper how I responded to him um, because it's so important because some people believe if they do good, they're going to make it into heaven. Amen. Absolutely. If they um, uh, abide by the law, if they abide by the rituals, the ceremonies that they're going to abide, um, that they're going to go to heaven. But the Bible tells us, amen, no man is going to enter into the kingdom, amen, without acknowledging Jesus Christ as their personal savior, amen. And it's not, once again, we're not justified by works. We're not justified by the law, but we're justified by Jesus Christ, our faith in Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. 
um, as we continue on, um, uh, let me bring up the deeper study here and we'll go into that. Uh, there we are. Okay, uh, on that deeper study one, um, would someone like to read uh, the introduction in point one for us? And you can read to uh, yeah, A and B of point one. Oh, I looked away. Uh, let me see. Anybody raise their hand? No. Okay. Uh, I got oh, it. Sister Stewart. Oh, okay. Um, God dealt with a man of material blessings. I'm sorry. If you want us to read God dealt with man and material blessings? Uh, yes. No. no, um, it should be justification. Deeper study right. one versus 15 to 16. Uh, read that down to point uh, two. Yes. If you have that. Okay. If not, I can read it. I, I know, like I said, I think the packet is a little off. Oh, okay. Because mine says justification. And it says five. So no, I don't have it. Okay. No problem. I have it. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, starting at the three major points, or um, you can or start with Lord. justification. Okay. Justification. No, this to is count to count no. someone righteous. It means to reckon, to credit, to account, to judge, to treat, to look upon as righteous. It does not mean to make a man righteous. All Greek verbs which end in uh, O-U-N mean not to make someone something, but merely to count, to judge, to treat someone as something. There are... Wow. There are three major points to note about justification. Why justification is necessary? Justification is necessary because of the sin and alienation of man. Man has rebelled against God and taken his life into his own hands. Man lives as he desires, fulfilling the lust of the eyes and of the flesh, clinging to the pride of life and to the things of the world. Man has become sinful and ungodly, an enemy of God, pushing God out of his life and wanting little, if anything, to do with God. Man has separated and alienated himself from God. Point B, justification is necessary because of anger, because of the wrath and anger of God. God is angry with the wicked every day, Psalm 711. Sin has aroused God's anger and wrath. God is angry over man's rebellion, ungodliness, hostility, unrighteousness, sin, and desertion. Man has turned his back upon God, pushing God away and having little to do with him. Man has not made God the center of his life. Man has broken his relationship with God. Therefore, the greatest need in man's life is to discover the answer to the question, how can the relationship between man and God be restored? Point two. No, no, uh, that's down to point one. Thank you, uh, Sister Ricky. Yep. Um, then we're going to go ahead into um, uh, the next point. But I had to um, come back to that first point. Um, I was so blessed when I read that um, yeah. the few weeks. Um, to count someone righteous, it, it means to reckon, to credit, to account, to judge, to treat, to look upon as righteous. It does not mean to make a man righteous. All Greek, all Greek verbs, which N and O-U-N, glory to God, mean not to make someone something, but merely to count to yeah. judge, to treat yeah. someone <laughs> as something. <laughs> Glory mm. to God. Um, and that is awesome. Uh, to, you know, our justification, when you look at this, amen, amen, we're being, uh, because of our 
faith in Jesus Christ, amen, we have been justified, amen. And when God looks at us, he doesn't look at us, you know, because of the sin and the failure that we uh, come from and that we were born into, but now he sees us as righteous, amen, because of his son, Jesus Christ. Um, do we have any thoughts on that particular um, point number one? I just think that's powerful. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting <laughs> Sister Ricky when she was reading, but when she read it, I said, oh, wow. Yeah. That was good. That was good. Mm -hmm. I like it. And justification also, you know, means declared not guilty, you know, yes. as well. You know, yes. declared not guilty. Mm hmm Yes. Amen. New and made whole. Yes. You say something, Ricky? I said, amen, Pastor. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get used to all these uh, different <laughs> different voices popping up. <laughs> okay. Um, by chance, do anybody have uh, number two? If not, I, I can read that. I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have you, Marissa. Oh. She stopped. Yes, yes. We're going to go to number two now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why God justifies a man. Um, God justifies a man because of his son, Jesus Christ. When a man believes in Jesus Christ, God takes that man's faith and counts it as righteousness. The man is not righteous, but God considers and credits the man's faith as righteousness. Why is God willing to do this? God is willing to justify man because he loves man that much. God loves man so much that he went, that he sent his own son into the world and sacrificed him in and, uh, and order to justify man. First John 3.14. Um, number B, God is willing to justify man because of what his son, Jesus Christ, has done for man. Um, Christ, uh, Jesus Christ has secured the ideal righteous for man. He came to earth to live a sinless and perfect life. As man, he never broke the law of God. He never went contrary to the will of God. He never broke the law of God. He never, uh, he, he went before God. Okay, I'm sorry. He never went contrary to the will of God. And even, not even once. Therefore, he stood before God and before the world as the ideal man, the perfect man, the representative man, the perfect righteousness that could uh, stand for the righteousness of every man. Maybe somebody else need to pick up because I can't hardly see this one. Oh, okay. I do have uh, my glasses on. <laughs> no problem, Pastor. Uh, Jesus Christ came into the world to die for man as the ideal man. He could take all, all the sins of the world upon himself and die for every man. Uh, his death could stand for every man. He exchanged places with man by becoming the sinner, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.19. He bore the wrath of God against sin, bearing the condemnation for every man. Again, he was able to do this because he was the ideal man. And as the ideal man, his death could stand for the death of every man. Mm. Jesus Christ. Wow, that is so powerful. The ideal mm. man, that his death could stand for the death of oh, every man. Yeah. That, that's the only one person could do that. And we all <laughs> talk about it. We all uh, reference it at points that Jesus mm. Christ was the, the ultimate sacrifice. He was the sacrifice. Um, though, as I said, when I was studying this, this lesson just came even more to life. It lets me realize even more how important Jesus Christ is to our salvation, how much he um, is to all mankind, because he paid the price for all men, not, not just some, but every man. Um, yes. He paid the price. And all we have to do is accept him as our personal savior. And because of that, 
Amen. We are then made righteous. Glory to God. Uh, Jesus Christ came into the world to arise from the dead and thereby conquer uh, death for man. As the ideal man, his resurrection and exaltation into the presence of God could stand for every man's desperate need to conquer death and to be acceptable to God. His resurrected life could stand for the resurrected life, glory, of the believer. Glory. Mm. Glory to God. His life, his resurrected life could stand for the resurrected life of the believer. Mm. One more time. Glory to God. <laughs> now, oh, as is. stated above, when a man believes in Jesus Christ, really believes, God takes that man's belief and counts it as the righteousness, perfection of Christ. The man is counted as righteous in Christ, counts it as the death of Christ. The man is counted as having already died in Christ, as having already paid the penalty for sin and the death of Christ. Counts it as uh, the resurrection of Christ. The man is counted as already having been resurrected in Christ. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm. Very simply, glory, very simply, God loves his son, Jesus Christ, so much that he honors any man who honors his son. By believing on him, he honors the man by taking the man's faith and counting, crediting it as righteousness and by giving him the glorious privilege of living with Christ forever in the presence of God. Mm. Point three. How God justifies a man. The world justifies, uh, that word there is D-A-K-I-O-U-N, D-I-A-K-I-O-U-N. This is a legal word taken from the courts. Uh, that's referencing back to Pastor when she said earlier, it pictures, a, uh, pictures man on trial before God. Man is seen as having committed the most he heinous, of, heinous of crimes. He has rebelled against God and broken his relationship with God. How can he restore that relationship? With human courts, if a man is acquitted, he is declared innocent. But this is not true within the divine court. When a man appears before God, he is anything but innocent. He is utterly guilty and condemned accordingly. But when a man sincerely trusts Christ, then God takes that man's faith and counts it as righteousness. By such, God counts the man, uh, counts the man, judges him, treats him as if he was innocent. Glory. I had to read that again. Amen. Be when um, you put your faith in Jesus Christ, then God takes that faith, amen, and counts it as righteousness. By such, God counts uh, the man, he counts the man, he judges him, treats him, as if he was innocent. The man is not made innocent. He's guilty. He knows it and God knows it, but God treats him as innocent. Glory to God. God justifies the ungodly. An incredible mercy, a wondrous grace. Glory to God. And uh, you don't have to turn to any deeper study there, but we're going to bring up the scriptures. Um, how do we know this? How can we know for sure that God is like this? Because Jesus said, um, because Jesus said so, he said that God loves us. We are sinners, yes, but Christ said that we are, um, that we are very, very dear to God. Amen. And I'm going to bring up here, uh, bring up the slides for justification and uh, we can read those scriptures. Okay, I'm not sure um, if you guys can see those scriptures. I know some of you on cell phones, um, but I'm going to ask someone if they would take the lead in reading those scriptures, if you could see those on your screen or on your packet. Um, starts off with um, Genesis 15 and 6, and he, Abraham. And he, Abraham, believed in the Lord, and he counted to him 
and he counted it to him for righteousness. Genesis 15 and 6. And by him all that believed are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Acts 13, 39. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, Romans 3, 23 and 24. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness, Romans 4 and 3. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5 and 1. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Romans 5 and 9. For he that is dead, counted dead, justified, is freed from sin. Romans 6 and 7. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Romans 8, 33. And such were some of you. But you are washed, but ye are sanctified but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus, in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians 2.16. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Galatians 3 and 6. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Galatians 3.24. And he found in him not having uh, my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. So we see here that we're justified, amen, uh, because of our faith in Jesus Christ, amen. Um, that's that's just an awesome um just an awesome thing, amen, because we have put our faith in Christ, it has made us justified, amen, um, now when God once again looks at us, he sees his son, Jesus Christ, amen, and he only sees his son, Jesus Christ, he doesn't see the sin, um, the guiltiness of, uh, of what we should be found guilty of, but he sees us as innocent um, believers in his son, Jesus Christ, and all because, amen, Christ is the one who justifies us, it's not our works. It's not how much money you give. It's not in the law. Um, it's not in, amen, ceremonies, rituals, but it is in our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have put our faith in him. And we have when we put our faith in him, amen, Christ, I mean, God now counts that, amen, as righteousness. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Do we have any thoughts before we go on to point five back on the sheet? Uh Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, God dealt with man and material blessings first because man had to learn several things. Amen. God dealt with man and, and material blessings first because man had to learn several things. Point A, an earthly inheritance does not last. It is subject to being lost or stolen. Uh, we either watch our material possessions deteriorate, deteriorate or else we leave our material possessions behind for others. And when I was reading that, uh, we all know that famous uh, quote, amen, that um, you have never seen a U-Haul, amen, uh, going behind a hearse on its way to the cemetery, amen. <laughs> so um, an earthly inheritance does not last. It is subject to being lost or stolen. Um, we either watch our material possessions deteriorate or else we leave our material possessions behind for others, amen. Um, point yes. B, uh, 
an earthly nation and material inheritance cannot bring peace and security. Peace and security are of the spirit. Earthly nations and material things are of the earth of a corruptible nature. Thus, nations and material things uh, do not solve the spiritual struggles that man senses within his own being. Neither can nations and material things erase the spiritual divisions between men and between man and God. So an earthly uh, nation and material inheritance cannot bring peace and security. C, man has within his inner being a basic selfishness and greed. Man finds a tendency, an unrelated urge, unregulated urge that desires and seeks the material and hoards the corruptible to neglect of the spiritual. Wow. D, man must undergo a basic change of character to be uh, freed of this, uh, to be freed of this urge, this tendency that causes so much bondage and disruption, disruption and division uh, within oneself and between men. Man must be born again, made into a new creation, created into a new man, spiritually, permanently, perfectly, eternal, eternally. And such a spiritual creation must be performed by someone much greater than himself. Man must be recreated by the hand of God himself. Amen. We're going to uh, stop right there and we're going to pick up uh, holy and blameless next week, uh, verse four. But tonight, amen, uh, it, we reference uh, verses uh, three, uh, the, talking about um, the blessing and the spiritual blessing. Um, and what I love about this is, and I didn't bring it out, um, because it was it was in a separate study that I was doing. Um, verse three points out again. It says, "Blessed be God, be the God the, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ Jesus." And what I learned about that, and um, I'm sure we're going to get to it at some point, is that um, how many know that we have dual sinner citizenship? Yes. Amen. And as I was studying that, Amen. It just blessed me to know that, you know, I have a U.S. citizenship. We all born in the United States or whatever. But when we when we became born again, we became citizens of heaven. And when we became citizens in heaven, that's how the spiritual blessings flow, because our God is in control of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And he looks to bless his people. He looks to cover his people, watch over his people, protect his people, do whatever necessary um, to make sure his people of his kingdom is taken care of. So I've been just learning that, you know, we must become kingdom minded. Amen. Um, we live in this earth. We have one foot here, but also we have a foot in heaven. Amen. And so even though we are have battles, we have struggles down here on the earth. Amen. We must let the spiritual realm of heaven override what we face down here on this earth. And we become kingdom per people because the, what God has done for us in heaven is already done. It's already been worked out. Um, I've learned that also um, in the spiritual realm, that's where he's fighting the enemy on our behalf. Um, uh, you find that also in Daniel, where Daniel prayed. And for so many days, the angel was held up. Amen. Because he was had to fight the enemy to get the blessing to him. But once the blessing came, uh, the angel was able to tell Daniel that, look, I was on my way the first time you already prayed. I was held up in a fight, but the blessing, amen, was already coming down from heaven on your behalf, amen. And that just blessed me because we're blessed with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So these spiritual blessings that we have are not earthly blessings, they're spiritual blessings. And we must look at them as being spiritual blessings and we are the children of God because of our justification and our righteousness because of Jesus Christ, we are blessed people. Amen. And we're going to continue Amen. learning about being blessed as we go forward. But I just had to bring that out because I've been just the last few weeks, I've been stuck on this kingdom person. Amen. We are kingdom people and we Amen. must operate in, as kingdom people, not earthly minded. We hear, but we must rely on the kingdom for our health, for our prosperity, 
for our salvation, for our eternity. All that concerns us, amen, comes from the kingdom because the world system is only going to bring us death, is going to deteriorate. And once again, the, the wealth that we get here down here on this earth cannot go with us to heaven, amen. It's going to be left behind. And we want to learn about that in, in inheritance when we get to that point. So it's so important to understand that we're blessed from heaven and not because your education, not because of who you're connected to, but because of your connection to God through his son, Jesus Christ. We're now kingdom people. Amen. 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 Do we have any um, uh, thoughts before we uh, get ready to uh, wrap up uh, tonight's lesson? Uh, next week, we'll pick up with uh, Holy and Blameless. Amen. Awesome lesson. Mm. Amen. I'm sorry, sister. Was that your hand, Ricky? Okay. I'm sorry. I can't find the uh, raise your hand on my screen fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> but um, as we were reading that last section, it made it all the more obvious how that spirit of lawlessness that abounds in the world today is is able and has uh, become such because of the gap between man and God. You can mm -hmm. see the gap. It makes it so obvious yeah. that um, that wouldn't be so if man was closer to God yeah. and individually and corporately, you know, mm -hmm. like it's just, it's out of hand, but there's because there's no connection. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. A uh, good point there, Sister Ricky. Uh, anybody else would like to chime in before we uh, close out tonight? It looks like Sister Stewart wants to say something. That's good. <laughs> Her hand is still up. <laughs> I, I don't know how to get it down, but I did want to say I do want to say this. I think you know when we're thinking about um, being born again and, and going into um, and being. Um, taken into a new realm. We don't really see that in the beginning. Like you were talking about the dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was, you know, from another country, you know, I really would hold to those principles. Yeah. And I think, you know, you know, now that we've transcended into a new kingdom, we have to really grasp those principles and accept it because they always, you know, I never deny that. You know what I'm saying? Like no one denies that they're from Spain. No one denies they're from Nigeria. No, they never deny their heritage. No. You know, and so when we have gone into our, you know, we have to claim mm -hmm. it. Like you're saying, we have to claim that heritage that we have now entered into mm -hmm. and walk and walk in it. Yes. You know, Amen. this is abstract, but now we see now how important it is to understand that principle that we have been transcended already into heavenly places. Yes. And have yes. To, a citizenship there with all the rights and benefits, mm -hmm. right? So if we don't take our vacation, or they just accrue. So, yeah. and they, or they, or we could lose them <laughs> so if you don't take your vacation time. Yeah. So we have to tap into those things that we have, so that it'll be like we don't have them in a sense because you're not using them. Yes. You know, yeah. It's one of the things, um, you know to be in the forefront like this is my citizen is up here mm. and I shouldn't be walking down there because God has already given me the things that I need yes 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 and that's what that's a good point because that's how I've been looking at it that my citizenship citizenship in heaven overrides my citizenship down here even though I'm blessed and got a great opportunities and great things happening for me but I should always count my um my blessings and things that come from my connection to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Um, so uh, um, any other closing remarks? Okay. Um, I'm going to go over announcements. Um, after announcements, if there are any um, prayer uh, requests, we're going to ask for those. And then we'll go ahead and um, uh, close out for tonight. Okay. Okay. Um, so our um, announcements for tonight, uh, of course, we know Time of Restoration radio broadcast is held on Thursdays at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. on WTMRradio.com, 800 a.m. on the radio dial, RCFC, rcfchurch.org. I'll take one of those C's out, 
Google Podcasts, um, Apple Podcasts, uh, through Restoration Christian Fellowship Church. Our pastor is up to lesson 12 on the series Walking. Um, I'm sure um, if you are listening and following along with this series, you're blessed. Um, I'm blessed every and each and every week that I listen to it and others around the nation are being blessed as well. So please uh, tune in any way you can at one of those um, options. You can do it live at, once again, at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. on 800 a.m. radio. Um, and then also um, WTMRradio.com. Um, but after those events, you can also go to our church website and our Google and Apple podcast um, to pick those up as well. Also this week, uh, we did have a scheduled church meeting. Um, that meeting has been canceled, postponed until next Friday, October 21st at 7 p.m. Uh, church meeting um, for this Friday has been canceled and rescheduled uh, for next Friday, October 21st at 7 p.m. at the church. Amen. Amen. Um, are there any other announcements um, to go over before I uh, get ready to close out? Yes. I'm sorry, it was a prayer request if you're ready for that. Sure. Okay, I was trying to type it, but I couldn't finish before you stopped talking. Oh. Um, I was just asking if we could uh, pray for bere bereaved families. Um, Tyra Cartwright, who have, we have prayed for many times. Uh, her, she has cancer and she's been a caretaker to her mother. She lost her mom um, last week. Oh, her okay. Mom's... And what was her name again? Tyra. Tyra. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, so, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Just taking into account that she um, has been fighting her cancer for so long, being a caretaker of her mother, that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll just keep continue to pray for her strength that she continues to fight. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now that that duty has been removed from her. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, before we close out, um, Pastor, do you have any final remarks? Well, we just thank God for the lesson and, you know, for the word of God. It's, you know, we're already in heaven. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, you know, eternity begins once we accept Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. So we just thank God for the fact that, you know, our citizenship is not here and we're conscious of it, you know. Mm -hmm. So we just thank God for his goodness and his mercies and for each one that's on the line for Bible study and thank God for you yes. and for the word of God mm -hmm. that, you know, we are justified by faith. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, mm -hmm. Let us uh, look to the Lord. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight. Thank you thank for this you. lesson on tonight. Thank you for your presence over the airways on tonight, God. We thank you that something was said to bless each and every one of us to encourage our hearts and uh, yes. to continue traveling down this road with you. We thank you for your word, oh God. And we just thank you, oh God, that we're justified because of our faith in Jesus yeah. Christ. We thank you, oh God, that that, that you just have done um, marvelous things for us. And you made a way for us to be reconnected to you, even though we are guilty, uh, that we are should be facing death and punishment. But because we have accepted your son, Jesus Christ, you have justified us, amen, and made us righteous. So we thank you on tonight, oh God, for your justification. And we thank you, oh God, for forgiving us, oh God, and placing us in right standing with our Father God. God, we thank you once again for restoration. We thank you for our pastor being on with us on tonight, all the members that are on with us on tonight, those who will view this in the future. Um, God, we pray that they will be blessed as we were blessed on tonight. And God, we pray for Tyra. Um, we pray for not just mm -hmm. her family, but we pray for all the Reed families all over the nation, mm -hmm. all over the world, those that have lost loved ones. Uh, we just pray and we lift them up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Send your comfort, mm -hmm. send your peace, oh God. Send your um, just your your joy, your 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 peace in the situations, amen, God, where people God. have lost loved ones, oh God. Because we know it's a lot of turmoil, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. But we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will send peace, oh God. Send your comfort to all those, amen, that, um, that are facing, amen, 
uh, the losing of a loved one, uh, the loss of a loved one in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, we have a request from Ukraine. Uh, Uliana on my job asked us to pray for her nation, amen, yes. uh, her country, amen. Um, she was telling me how her brother, amen, has experienced seeing, actually seen a missile fly over the top of their apartment building, amen, and as it went and struck, amen, an actual school. So it's yes. so sad, oh God, that's happened. what's happening in Ukraine. So we pray for that nation in the oh, name yes. of Jesus Christ. We bind the hand of the enemy, amen, that is trying to totally wipe out that nation. But God, I yes. thank you, God, that you're still with that nation and you're fighting with them, amen. Uh, many other nations would have given up or gave up by now, amen, but yet they're still fighting, amen, against the, 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 the wiles of the enemy so i thank you oh god for thank sparing you. that nation we thank you oh god for watching over those families that have lost loved ones in that nation and we pray oh god that that they will be victorious oh god that they will be able to withstand this attack from the enemy and god once again we thank you for restoration we thank you for our church we thank you for the future of our church um, we pray amen for the families of our church and yes. we pray for the health of our church and we pray for everything that concerns our church that you will bring it to perfection in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, we just thank you once again for this class. We thank you for all those that are on. And we thank you for those who will view this in the future. We thank you for um, just your word on tonight. And we thank you for who you are in our lives. And God, until we meet again, may your grace and your mercy continue to travel with us all the days of our lives. In amen. Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. 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 We truly thank God for you all joining um, please be blessed and Amen. look forward to seeing everyone in church on Sunday if they can make Amen. it. God bless. God bless.